What do you do in October? Have you heard about Inktober drawing prompts? Check out my mini nature journal filled with bird and plant nature journaling and field sketching pages. This October, I combined two sets of Inktober inspired nature journal drawing prompts in to one nature sketchbook. Big thanks to Kayla Fisk for Birdtober prompts and Louise Gale for botanical Inktober prompts, both from 2022, for their lists of nature journal prompt topics that inspired the pages in this nature journal flip through. Let's go on a nature journal tour of the spin-off of Inktober and see what kind of mixed media sketches I came up with based on these sets of nature journal prompts. Each day's drawing prompts are written in brown and then my personal notes are written in orange that include species names and my personal memories or connections. Many of the pages reference my growing up years in the woodlands and wetlands of Minnesota as well as my current life in Arizona. I should mention that my name is Kathleen Arilla Johnson and I really appreciate everyone who subscribes to this channel, Creative Solace Studios. Some of the botanicals were sketched outside or in local garden centers, such as this chrysanthemum. I appreciated having some free choice days, such as these bird silhouettes, and I really like this page. I think I need to revisit this layout idea on a larger project. It was really important to me to document personal connections to the topics such as remembering these endemic panamint daisies that only grow in the Death Valley area of California where I hiked to see them in 1993. And over on this page, there's memories of two baby Gambel quails that were trapped in my parents' patio and we brought them to a wildlife rescue in 2014. Sometimes I worked from photographs, like here in this mini ocean landscape and this hibiscus from our travels to Hawaii. It's also important to me to approach the topics from different perspectives, such as not always drawing the flower. These are the tubers, like the bulbs of the dahlia flower, and here's a close-up of a bald eagle foot and talons rather than drawing the entire bird. The book itself is three signatures of three pages stitched together. Oftentimes I used watercolor paints and a black Pigma Micron 005 pen. I also use some other mixed media supplies such as colored pencils from time to time. I experimented with different layout styles such as varying the size of the drawings and different placement of the lettering or words that went along with them. Over here is a packet of bulbs of another flower. I hope by this time in this nature journal flip through that you're coming up with your own nature journaling and field sketching things that you would like to try, such as comparing three species that are similar or gesture drawings of the basic sketches, the basic shapes of an animal. There are so many different forms that nature journaling can take 
and it's all about exploration and recording your experiences, even dating back to childhood memories and learnings of the wonderful world around us. Think about your different senses, such as the sound patterns of a bird, as well as unanswered questions that you might have of wildlife or the natural world, such as me wondering about what happened to those house finch babies when I saw their broken egg on the ground. Did they fly away or did something else happen to them? How about jotting down a to-do list of things that you would like to observe or do? This page has the same lake sketched five different times, and then I documented the flight pattern of the pigeons back and forth around it. So I hope you're enjoying this tour of my nature journal and how I expressed myself and my experiences, but I also hope that you're thinking of how you could express yourself and document your own learnings in a similar project. I believe that our connections with nature are really important and stay with us. For example, the whooping crane was an endangered species report that I did way back in sixth grade in the early 80s, and I still feel connected to that animal because of it. Even if it's not October, the month of these Inktober drawing prompts and challenges, you could still use these same lists of inspiring words, or you could come up with your own topics to do a daily practice in your own nature journal or sketchbook. When I finish up a journal, I like to reflect upon the experience of creation of this book and what I learned from it. For example, from this journal, here's the things that I really got out of this practice. Ways to depict birds and botanicals. Here's an example of a boxy critter style of documenting the color patterns of a bird that I learned in the Wild Wonder Nature Journal conference. Um, the importance of connecting personal experience and memories. Things mean so much more when we can add our own touches to them. The unity of working with a theme, the birds and botanicals. Cultivating a daily practice, doing this every day for a month in this same book. Connecting with community through the hashtags of these challenges and online. Learning a variety of ways to express a topic, wanting to show different parts of birds, different habitats, different ways to look at the flowers, different parts of the flowers and plants. And finally, nature journal love. It is so wonderful to express yourself through a nature journal and to keep these type of notes to be able to look back on as a keepsake memory and a documentation of what you learned and experienced. Let me know in the comments what you learned by watching this mini nature journal video. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for coming along to this nature journal tour and subscribing to Creative Solace Studios.